the city of Urban Town. Despite the crime and corruption which infest the streets, the citizens of this bustling metropolis sleep soundly at night, knowing they are protected by two great defenders of truth and justice. He is Detective Danger, a cunning master of mystery and illusion. She is the Amazon, an ancient warrior of nearly limitless power. As they seek to defend the citizens of this fair city from the forces of darkness, they are comrades in arms. In their everyday life... Not so much. This episode, Corey's all heinous. I'm not exactly the motherly type. It's probably a good thing. So many times the children of supervillains end up fighting on my side of the equation, and I suspect the reverse would be true as well. Teenage rebellion really stinks when you can shatter titanium. Besides, if you have kids, it means you have to be, I don't know, together. You need to be an expert on lots of things. Where did the blankie go? What are we having for dinner? Who's that strange guy in the cape pointing a shrink ray at us? Me? On a good day, I'm an expert at ordering Chinese food. Don't get me wrong, mothers are important. I'm very happy to have had one, and I agree that one Sunday in May is not enough to make up for all they do. I just want to go on record as saying that when it comes to the maternal route, I look for a detour. It probably doesn't help that my mother and I have a pretty tense relationship. After my dad died, we were close for a while, but eventually we both had to move on with our lives. I don't think either one of us could forgive the other for that. By the time we realized how stupid that was, we were in very different places. And by that point, I also had an eight-foot-tall ancient warrior living in my brain. You know, this is getting a little personal, and I'm sure I'm not the only one who's uncomfortable. How about we switch to talking about another kind of mother? Mother ships. Someone help me! We are the Vulsions. We offer you a simple choice. Slavery or death. You have ten seconds to decide. Please, please leave me alone. Seven seconds. Slavery or death. Trick question. The answer is Lake Titicaca. Alert! Alert! Superpowered opponent located. Designation, Detective Danger. Hey, I didn't know I was famous in the intergalactic circles. We have studied the defenses of this city in preparation for our invasion. Your powers are known to us. And that would be why you haven't fired that little pop gun yet. As it is likely you are not where you seem to be, yes. So, I gotta know, what contingency plan did the mighty Vulsion Armada make for little old me? Hmm. Teleporting and reinforcements. That's a promising start. Okay, so what are you and your 11 new best friends going to do? Set weapons for wide dispersal. Fire in every direction. Ah, good plan. But you forgot one thing. What are you talking about? If that fancy computer screen in front of your left eye has an English dictionary built in, please turn to the entry under... Distraction. Welcome to my city. So nice of you to stand so close together. It is the Amazon! Scatter! I will do that for you. Our weapons are ineffective. Retreat. Reach. No, that will not be happening. Aw, you didn't save me any. The city is overrun. You may have your choice later. True enough. You okay, lady? You better get down into that subway tunnel. It should be safer underground. Thank you. Thank you both. Well, one girl saved, a dozen Vulsions out for the count... And about 50,000 left to take out. And as long as that mothership is above us, I doubt things will get much better. Can your technology get us there? Sorry. I was working on making a jetpack once, but it totally ruined the lines of my coat. Hmm. If we could get to the top of one of these buildings, I might be able to throw something up to the ship. Hmm. What were you thinking? A car? A bus? I was thinking of you. Me? You could infiltrate the ship. Or splatter up against the side. I am still working on the details. Yeah, can we come up with another plan? Any other plan? Would you be able to fly one of the transport ships they came on? 
I could try if we found one unguarded. Or if we removed the guards. <laughs> Amazon, I could kiss you. I will keep that in mind, but not just now. Come. There they are. Why do we lurk in the shadows? Well, technically, I'm lurking. You're barely maintaining cover. And we're doing it because we got about a hundred people herded like cattle into the far side of that transport platform. I see them now. Oh, dear. What is it? That man with the curly beard. I know him. Old boyfriend? Of course not. That man is still alive. But I have seen him before. He is the editor of The Standard. Uh, really? Isn't that where your friend B works? Precisely. We should rescue them. You think? Problem is, we go storming in there, as is your want, and they'll kill off all those people just to get them out of the way. You have another plan. Well, just thinking off the top of my head, I thought I'd use my Matrix... to make myself look like a completely non-threatening schlub. Then I'd go surrender to them and take up a new profession as a clock cleaner. How do I look? I can honestly say I have no idea how you look. Illusions will do that to you. Maybe someday I'll let you peek at my real face. Only the face. Cute. You'll come pull my fat out of the fire if this doesn't work? Guaranteed. Into the frying pan, then. Hey, hey, don't shoot! I'm unarmed! I, I, surrender! You traitor! Silence the bearded one. Step forward and accept your new masters. Selena, are you seriously flirting with Detective Danger? Oh, come, Beatrice. I spent so much time cooped up inside your body, and most of the men I meet are, well, evil. This is your idea of Mr. Wright? He's cocky, mysterious, and possibly dangerous. In your time, I believe the phrase is, just my type. Oh, for pity's sake, I have to share this brain with you. Wait, something is wrong. We may be compromised. Ah! Oh, come. Please stretch now. Do you require help? I'm good. Thanks. He takes such pride in his work. That's not his work you're staring at. He is nearly finished. Fine. We'll have this discussion later. Or better yet, never, ever again. I think that's all of them. I am on my way. Okay, people. We thank you for flying Alien Express. Now get the heck off this bucket. The Amazon and I are going to take off and take the fight to the Vulsions. Yay! Yay! Wait just a minute. Say, aren't you the editor of the Standard? Yes, as a matter of fact. Well, it's going to take more than a press pass to get us to bring you along. It's dangerous up there. Now see here. You can't possibly hope to defeat an entire army with just the two of you. Are you insinuating that I cannot? Well, look, I, I'm just saying that there's a better way. Really? Since they captured me, I've been trying to figure out a plan. Look at that gas station over there. I say we grab every bottle, can, whatever, and fill them with gas. Then you can set this thing to autopilot, send it right back to where it came from, and blow up the hangar. What do you think? Huh. That, that could work. Probably won't take out the ship completely, which is good because we don't want it crashing down on the city. But if they know the transport ships are vulnerable, they might just cut and run. The plan is sound, then. Citizens, you heard the man. Go and bring me gasoline. How much longer do you think? Considering I'm using a jury-rigged remote control to steer a piece of alien technology? Yes. That was meant to indicate I have no clue. It seemed clear to me. Well, I just... Wait. That looks like a tractor beam. Yes. And now the docking station opens. I would call that a successful kaboom. Yay! Yay! Quite an impressive spectacle. It's working! The other transport ships are taking off! Nicely done, Mr. Editor. That was a swell plan. The ship continues to burn. I think that you've got a pretty solid headline for tomorrow's paper. What is that? Get down! What was that? Secondary explosion. Must have jettisoned something. Yes, but what? 
Looks like a big disc of red glass. Cool to the touch. Look. Glass would have shattered. Mm, true enough. No moving parts. I always carry a Geiger counter when I fight spacemen, and it's not going off. I'm guessing it's some kind of cosmic ball bearing. Tell you what, pal, why don't you keep it as a souvenir? Really? Yeah, what kind of trophy did you want? A giant penny? Oh, well, th this will be fine. I didn't catch your name, pal. What? Oh, oh, it's, uh, Corey. Corey Marshall. May I do the honors? I wish you would. People of the city, may I present your hero, Corey Marshall. The mother ship left orbit shortly thereafter, and long-range telescopes confirm that it has docked on Mars, presumably to effect repairs. The costumed protectors of Urbantown, Detective Danger and the Amazon, have both given credit for the plan which ended the invasion to a member of the media. Mr. Corey Marshall, assistant editor of the Urbantown Standard, will be honored by the mayor with a special medal and commendation later this week. The super team, known as the Justice Defenders, has been keeping a close tab on the alien ship to make sure they don't attempt a return trip. In an interview with Captain Goody... They won't be back. Not after the drubbing I just gave them. Hey, Corey, what's the news? You're the reporter, B. Pretty sure it's your job to tell me what the news is. Relax, Cupcake. I dropped a story off at the copy editor's desk ten minutes ago. Don't call me Cupcake. Fine, Cheesecake. Now listen, who's going to be covering your ceremony? You want to cover a puff piece like that? I like an occasional puff piece. You hate puff pieces. I like puff pieces about my editor. Pull the other leg. I like puff pieces that are happening in City Hall, two doors down from Judge Brutus's office. The one who's been implicated in that bribery scandal. The very same. And if you happen to leave a little late and accidentally step into his office... Well, it is right next to the ladies' room. I get the picture, B. Great. So I'll see you at the ceremony. I trust it won't tax you too much. I'll give it my full attention right up until I go visit Judge Brutus. Say, what's that in your shirt pocket? Hmm? Well, that's a little memento Detective Danger gave me after I sent the Vulsions off with their tails between their legs. Oh. My editor, the Alien Hunter. It'll be a while before those purple freaks want to mess with me again. Not to burst your bubble, but didn't Detective Danger actually fly in the fire ship? Well, it was my idea. Okay. Those costumed posers probably have gotten themselves killed if it wasn't for me. All right. Costumed superheroes. Never trusted those foolhardy freaks. We don't even know who they are under those masks. The Amazon doesn't even wear a mask. And there's quite a lot of other things she doesn't wear as well. Listen, Corey, do you need me here for this rant or can you handle it by yourself? Nobody likes a wiseacre bee. That'll be my mother. Go on, get out of here. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. See you tomorrow, Cream Puff. And don't call me... Hello, Mother. Not that much of a turnout, is it, B? Benny, do you have enough room on the bench? Are neither of you going to speak to me? You brought him. He was my ride. He was duped. No one told him that she was coming. Do we both have to talk in third person, or just you? Do we both have to talk? Can it just be me? Here we go. If you didn't want to be between us, you could have warned me. I would have let you borrow my car. Or I could have picked you up. Or the two of you could behave like adults. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, you two make my head spin sometimes. B, have you seen Corey yet? No. And we probably won't until the mayor has him make his grand entrance. Yeah, I don't know about grand. There are only about 50 people here. Well, people are busy putting their homes back together. Besides, what Corey did was great and all, but it's not like he risked his life to do it. Don't tell him that. To hear him tell it, you'd think he personally brought down the mothership with nothing more than a slingshot and a dream. Fifty-two? Is that Corey? 
I saved the city from an entire alien armada, and only 52 people bothered to show up? Please tell me my boss isn't throwing a hissy fit. <laughs> Maybe no one heard him. You didn't notice the crowd stopped murmuring? Oh dear. Don't tell me to calm down! Why are the lights flickering? And what's that red light coming from under the curtain? You dare! You ungrateful wretches! B, when did your boss learn how to fly? Look out! This city will pay for its ingratitude! It looks like his heart is glowing! No, it's that alien doohickey in his shirt pocket. This city shall fall! The walls are collapsing! Hero, watch out! Woo! It turned out that when the builders in City Hall were putting this particular presentation hall together, they skimped on the materials. What should have been five or six tons of materials crashing down on us turned out to be only about a ton and a half. Granted, that's still a lot, but it meant that what could have killed us all ended up only breaking a few bones, none of them mine, and putting who knows how much dust straight into my lungs. This was good news. Not only was I still alive, but it meant I could do some investigating on the building company involved and thank them for saving my life by putting them out of business. Of course, before I did that, I had a small issue with my boss. The first man who had ever given me a chance as a reporter was on a rampage to destroy the city with strange alien powers. Oh, and I had to rush my best friend to the hospital with a fractured tibia. Is Claude on his way? He's coming, Hero, but traffic is a little messed up. With the way 10th Street is crowded, I'm guessing it'll be at least an hour before... Hero, are you all right? Oh, sweetie. I I'm okay, Annie. The doctor said it's probably just a hairline fracture. How did you get here, Claude? What do you mean? The traffic. The roads with the small craters in them. My wife was in the hospital. And that allows you to bend time and space. I might have broken a few traffic laws. And a few laws of physics. That's my brother. Okay. Now that the happy lovers are reunited, I need to get out there and cover the story. And I need to do some... stuff. 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 I'm busy right now, but remind me to mock you incessantly later. That's it! Flee! Flee, my city! Corey Marshall, cease this attack on these innocents. Oh, look! It's one of the two biggest glory hounds in the city! The rubble you create only gives me something to send back at you. Ugh. What sorcery is this? Just a guess, but it's some kind of force field. I tried picking him off with a needle gun about four blocks ago. Those did seem like very persistent mosquitoes. It matters little. I will find a way to crack his shell. Someone help me! Amazon, look. That building's gonna fall on that woman. She's pinned under that rubble. Ah, I see. A convenient excuse to run in terror. Go on, save her for all the good it will do you. When, when you two, two so-called so champions decide, decide to grow a spine, you'll, you'll know, know where, where to find me. I will turn his shoulders to powder. Later, hot stuff. For now, could you give me a hand to prop up this building? <sighs> you know, you could use both hands, just to make me feel better about myself. I have it. Fair enough. Come, sweet lady, your rescuers have arrived. Thank you. Thank you both. I think once I get this piece of stonework off your leg... There. Can you walk? Thank you. Thank you both. Uh, I'll take that as a yes. Come. We must stop, Corey Marshall. Hang on one second. Aren't you the same girl we saved in that alleyway during the invasion? Is this reunion truly crucial? Well, not in and of itself, but... When you think about what a terrible streak of bad luck this girl has been having... We are wasting time. Such a terrible streak of luck, in fact, that she's wearing exactly the same clothes she was wearing two days ago, torn in the same places. I am sorry you cannot afford more garments, woman. 
May we leave now, Detective Danger? As soon as she explains why the scratches on her arms haven't healed even one little bit in two days. They're not new scratches, mind you. They're the exact same scratches in the exact same places. You are certain? My memory's not photographic, but I never forget a pretty face. And you notice she hasn't said anything to us beyond the same. Someone help me, and thank you both, which she said when we first met her. I told Command this would never work. Evulsion. In the synthetically made fake flesh. You have spotted him well. You catch up to Corey. I will drag this one into unconsciousness. Wait. Please, let me go. I come unarmed. That was very foolish of you. Uh, hold on, hold on. Before you crush its windpipe, shall we ask what prompted this visit? I have come for our power source. What? What? Our power source. It was lost in your attack. At first we thought it was simply offline. But then we discovered it had been blown clear of the ship. Auxiliary power got us to the planet you call Mars. But we cannot leave the solar system without it. Why should we believe you? Because if you do not, you will face another invasion. Do not threaten me, little purple skin. This is not a threat. It is necessity. Mars cannot support us for long, and we lack the power to return home. There is no place we can survive except on your planet. But this time, we will not come to steal some slaves and go our way. If we return, we will land the mothership and begin our occupation. We'll never let you get away with it. That's a kind of war which... Which no one can win. I agree. Why do you think I've come here? If I can retrieve our power source, we can escape your system and move on to other worlds less... stubborn. Amazon, what's your women's intuition tell you? That I would prefer to hear what his bones sound like when they shatter. But that I think we should let him live. Agreed. So, Mr. Alien Guy, uh, forgive me, what's your name? I am called Aphidius the Conqueror. Hmm, funny. I'm going to call you Alphidius, the alien who will keep all thoughts of conquering under wraps lest I find the need to see exactly what parts of your anatomy are actually vital. It does not exactly roll off the tongue. Hmm, you're right. Alfie it is, then. Humans. Yes, yes we are. So let me hazard a guess. This power source, it's... See-through, red, octagon-shaped, about the size of the palm of my hand. Indeed, the flying one with which you had a dispute carries it close to his torso. If you've got a power source that can fire energy like that, why not use it in the initial attack? You power your cities with electricity, yet you would not hold a charged wire in your hands. It's the same for us. Humans are more resilient to the energies it gives off, but soon the one holding the crystal will be consumed by it. How do we shut it down? Do you really think something that can power an interstellar vessel can easily be deactivated? Particularly when it's so close to its fuel? Make sense, Alfie. The crystal is powered by a human that carries it. Emotions you call frustration and jealousy create a wavelength of energy which the crystal feeds on and amplifies. We keep our prisoner class near the crystal to utilize their dissatisfaction. So when Corey Marshall calms down... He will not. The crystal wants to be fed... Since he first touched it, it has started feeding more negative energy into this Corey Marshall to keep him at the point of rage. So what do we do? I suggest you lead him away from civilians, and when he burns out like a Nova, you can retrieve the crystal for me. I don't accept that he's a lost cause. There is very little you can do about it. We could try chocolate. What? When I am angry, it calms me down. Amazon, that's brilliant. Brilliant? Now I know our people are the superior race. You shall. If we can shock Cory into some other emotion, a sudden jolt of endorphins, it might just interrupt the force field. If I can hit him with a sedative needle, he'll pass out and the crystal loses its energy source. It is a good idea. How do we shock him? I have no idea. I do. Selena, can you get rid of these two and let me come out for a minute? My friend B knows this Cory well. She may have a suggestion. You two go and confront Cory. I will consult with her. I did not agree to fight this human for you. You may fight him, or fight me. I will follow your lead, sir. Good boy, Alfie. They are gone. I enter this world. And I leave it. Now I need a payphone. I knew it! You've turned traitor, and now you're working with them. Yes, you're right. Does that make you happy, 
really, really happy. Yeah, it was worth a shot. You do not manipulate his emotions very well, considering you are of the same species. I miss the aliens that didn't speak English. Corey Marshall! Oh no, it's the Amazon. I tremble in terror. It is time to end this foolishness. You could not be more right. Stand still a moment. Do you see that blue car coming here? Don't try to distract me. Look! I'm here! I got her! What, what is this? this? Claude? Oh, hey, Detective Danger. B called and told me it was real important that I get down to South Street and then back here. That's over 40 blocks. How did she get here so fast? Uh, B said it was important. Do, Do not, not test, test my, my patience. patience! Oh, sorry. Let me just get the door here. Corey! Oh, my brave boy! This young man told me you have superpowers now. Oh, you'll make such a wonderful superhero. I'm so proud of you. Ma. Mother? The energy field. I see it. Well, it's about time. I couldn't keep that sentimental crap up for long. Mrs. Marshall, sorry I had to... You're going to be sorry if you don't get that alien doohickey away from my son. Uh, uh y yes, ma'am. And as for you, Mr. Martian, you get your skinny alien backside back to where you came from. I never want to see your sorry little carcass on this side of Haley's Comet, or I'll show you a side of a supernova you never wanted to... Be. That's a mama for you. I knew someone who raised a nice guy like Corey couldn't help but be a smart cookie. I think he had to take a mortgage on his house for all the flowers he sent her. Corey spent three weeks in the hospital. Given that he just saved the city and that he really hadn't destroyed that much of it, most people decided to call it even. He went back to his job as the best pain in the neck I ever worked for. Oh, and speaking of hospitals... Here she is. Hero! Hero. How's the leg, sweetie? Oh, I should be back on my feet in a few weeks. You need some time off? <laughs> oh, no. If I leave you along with the files, I will never find anything. Well, you just sit there. I'll make some coffee. Oh, none for me. The doctor says I should avoid caffeine. Because of the pain medications? <laughs> no. I'm pregnant. Oh, <laughs> Claude. Um, I guess I should have told him first. You have been listening to Detective Danger in the Amazon, Episode 4, Corey's All Heinous. Produced by Seat of Our Pants Players, written and directed by Dan Wenzel. B was Jill Wenzel. Benny was Adam Gastingy. The Amazon and Corey's mama were Andy Gastingy. Corey was Andrew Dell. Helphidius was Liz Music. Claude was Rick Tennant. Hero was Bree Kuby. The innocent bystander and the news reporter were Rebecca Scheimer. Additional alien voices were Aaron Manka White. Music and sound effects provided by www.freesfx.co.uk. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll talk to you later.